Hello everybody, this is Richard Cespedes and I'm here with a new video upload to talk about my new idea for a telekinesis helmet and chakra powering suit. Now I know it took a while to upload some videos, but as you know I like to upload videos that has meaning and has a lot of truth to them. So without further ado, here's my idea for the telekinesis helmet. It will have to bring blood flow and energy to the parts of the brain that are involved in making you be able to do telekinesis. We will start with the vision and hand coordination like the occipital lobe you see here. As you can see the occipital lobe is highlighted in the yellow and red bright areas. And right here you can see the occipital lobe in the bottom part of the picture. Uh, it's cut in half. It, it extends and almost touches the center of the brain. And this is the frontal uh, eye fields which has to do with hand-eye coordination but in this case using your mind's hand to move the objects. And this is a better look of it. Uh, to continue on with the description of this area, the frontal lobe, the thalamus, the cerebral cortex, the parietal cortex, and one of the biggest is the occipital parietal junction, which has to do with hand-eye coordination that I believe is connected to telekinesis abilities. Now we'll focus on the parts of the brain that allow us to imagine. Imagination. Now those parts of the brain that allow us to do that are the occipital lobe again, the dorsolateral as you can see in the picture right here, right in the top blue section. And to continue on, the other parts would be the prefrontal, the preconius, the frontal parietal, and the posterior, and etc. The most important is the focusing on the occipital parietal junction in combination with the parts of the brain for imagination, which is the which are both very important key components for performing telekinesis and psychokinesis abilities. Now we're going to focus on the emotional aspect of the brain, which is, I believe, is one of the key components for psychic abilities and activation of the pineal gland, is the limbic system, which is uh, located in the mammal, mammalian brain. And you can see there, it's right in the center of the brain. It's real close. It has the thalamus, all the pineal gland is all there right in the limbic system. So it's a very important component to activating uh, the pineal gland chakra and doing psychokinesis abilities. I would either use a helmet that projects uh, soft magnetic frequencies or another form of frequency that would help to influence and bring more energy and blood flow to those specific parts of the brain. Now I'm talking about the limbic system and the emotions because emotions I believe um, I would use the magnetic uh, frequencies to influence uh, positivity from the person. Um, optimism, belief, um, euphoria to bring the person into a meditative state and to activate the chakras and the psychic abilities. Now we're going to focus on how the brain anticipate. Anticipation of seeing the object move. And those parts of the brain are the interior cingulate, as you can see in this picture here, the dorsolateral prefrontal, the parietal cortices, and the prefrontal cortex. You will be a walking, talking, telekinesis animal with this helmet on. Now I believe there's four big parts that are involved in helping you do telekinesis and those are the occipital parietal junction in combination with the dorsal lateral and the other parts of the imagination, obviously the pineal gland, and the um, anterior cingulate. Uh, there's other parts that are obviously the whole brain is connected and helps you to do everything because that's how it works to make you live and survive and and solve problems in your life but these four parts are probably connected and have a greater influence and have more blood flow in them um, that allow you to uh, do telekinesis the three big ones that are more realistically used for telekinesis uh, without going into a meditative state with the pineal gland will probably be the uh, occipital parietal junction, the dorsolateral, and the um, anterior cingulates. Those are the three big ones that we do to perform uh, aerokinesis, telekinesis, hydrokinesis, electrokinesis, umbrokinesis, all the kinesis. Also, you could probably use this helmet, um, you know, as a pre kind of warm up. You just put it on top of your head and let it warm up those parts of the brain, as I said, those three big parts and uh, basically the whole entire brain to allow you to get into a more uh, psychokinetic meditative state for training for flight so you would take it off warm up take it off and then go inside the soft levitation training station and then begin training for flight so too um, i was talking about um the chakra powering suit and i'm still theorizing on that i'm not too sure how it will work maybe the helmet will be just enough because the brain is connected to the chakras to the to these glands so anything that you do that you affect in the brain will will directly affect the chakras the glands you know whatever you do to change the the um the blood flow within the certain parts of the brain will affect you know your body and everything else so i think maybe uh there probably wouldn't be no need for it but i'm still thinking about it and figuring out just how maybe i could make a suit or something like that and the other thing is um 
I want to talk about that in time, um, when wearing a helmet, it would provoke um, neuroplasticity growth, which would uh, build and strengthen the brain like a muscle. By creating new connections, as the brain learns, it creates new connections, new neural connections, and like a muscle, by bringing more blood flow to those areas of the brain, building it and making it more stronger, you know, and by focusing more energy on those specific parts of the brain that allows to do telekinesis, as, I, as I've described and spoken of in this video. And uh, I hope and I would suspect that this would be true. And again, this is uh, Ricky Cespedes, that's my idea for the telekinesis helmet and chakra powering suit thing. And there's one more thing before I go, um, I just wanted to point out that um, this is the first time that uh, I think anyone has ever mapped out the neurological uh, of, um, anatomy of, the, of how the brain performs telekinesis. I believe that that's probably the, this is the first time it's ever been shown. You know, that it shows um, the anatomy of the structure and the specific areas of the brain that activate when you're trying to perform telekinesis on an object. I'm happy to give you guys a basic idea of the neural structure or telekinesis in the brain. This, those are my ideas. Thank you guys for watching.